I'm just going to cut a piece of wire. All righty, we're live. Hey, everybody, welcome. Hi. Hi, Lynn. Uh, Hi, Shira. Hi. So we have, go ahead. Um, oh, I oh, want to start with a, just a little benediction, then Sam gets to talk. So we appeal to the goddesses of creativity to guide our hands today. That's it. Done. <laughs> Amazing. All right, I'm going to post the link in a few places, so I'll let you two chat away. Okay. Hi. Today, today's syllabus is this class is not about design because um, I don't presume to tell anybody how to design. We each have our own design sense, and that needs to be nurtured and appreciated by ourselves. Okay. For our purposes, we are only discussing wire stringing and finishing today. We're not talking about knotting. We're not talking about silk cord. Um, so it's bracelets and necklaces and specifically on wire. <clears throat> so um, I have here and Sam now has on the website two items in wire. <clears throat> I have asked Sam to, and, and I, I need to explain and apologize. My clients expect very high end. I'm not afraid to charge them for it. Um, I have in, since I'm 15 years old, been making jewelry and I've learned a lot about materials and it's not snobbery, it's how I want my pieces to work. I've used Beetalon wire, I've used Anilon wire, and they, they get kinks in them. They're not good, they don't hold up as well. Softlex is a company that pretty much most of what they do is wire. And it is steel wire that has different strands of very, very, very fine steel, and it's encased in nylon. The purpose of the nylon is number one, to shield your fingers from the steel, but also nylon is soft, so it can be crimped. And that is 90% of our lesson today is crimping. So <clears throat> what Sam has stocked, and uh, again, I buy my spools in thousand foot rolls because I need to, and it's cheaper for me. When you're first getting started, Sam has stocked 30 foot rolls of soft touch, yep. fine, and 100 foot rolls, <laughs> soft touch, fine, and the same in soft flex. What's the difference between the two of them? They both say they are the same diameter. And they are, when you use a micrometer, they are the same diameter. The wire in the soft touch is finer and more flexible. The wire inside the nylon of soft flex is sturdier. Great. So, Lynn, can I pause you there for one second? Sure. want to welcome everyone who's just joined. Um, we have two new faces today, as I'm sure you've noticed. We have, because it's always been Rachel for the last three months. Um, so we have Lynn joining to teach the class today. And then Lynn <laughs> invited Shira today, which makes me so happy. We have the Shira joining us, um, who moderates the gem chat and a longtime customer and lovely human. Thank you. Um, so we're all just going to be beating along today. Lynn's going to be sharing her knowledge of stringing um, and the supplies she uses, the proper technique of crimping, all of that. Um, Rachel commented she didn't see all those things you just mentioned. So I just um, added all those extra options that Lynn just talked about for Softflex. Um, the first one I had stocked was just the basic fine 30 foot rolls just to get us going. And now you'll see a lot more in the shop and I'm gonna keep adding to that. You know, um, and, and the good news is about Softflex that now that Sam is a dealer, um, he, he does not have a minimum order. 
So things that I'm gonna show you that I've used, for example, I have used copper metallic wire to string the Greek piece I'm gonna show you first. And, you know, if you do a lot in copper, this is shiny copper, this is not antique copper, um, then, and you wanna try it, Sam can order you a 30 foot spool of the copper metallic soft flex wire. Yeah, and um, I also happen to live, soft flex is near Lynn. Um, very close in Sonoma, yeah. Yeah, so it comes next day when I order it. So if you need anything, just let me know and I'll get it ordered. Softflex, you can also go on their site, softflexcompany.com, and you can see all the colors of wire. Um, I don't find that rose quartz has much uh, saturation. So I use pink wire when I string it, and it, it has greater saturation like the silk pink threads that they come strung on when you get them from India. Okay. That's, so, that's interesting because Rachel and I were talking about a morganite strand that once you put it on wire, it suddenly didn't have the same bright pink hue it had when it was on the pink string it came on. Right. So and that would totally solve that problem. Yeah, so you can get pink. And All also right. what's amazing about soft flex is that they have over 25 different colors. And so wow. I know last time I was at a bead show um, last year. When one was of the that? Things what, wait, that was a thing? What was that? <laughs> uh, one of the ones that I saw that I was like, ooh, I want this so badly. It was like a neon yellow wire. And I was like, oh, I can't justify getting neon yellow wire, but I want it. It's on my wish list. <laughs> so a 30 foot strand is no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Okay, let's start with the basic crimping technique. So I have pulled in front of us crimp covers because folks, oops, is this breakfast on here? <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got lunch right here. I know, it's great. <laughs> uh, crimps are ugly. And when they're not, I mean, they're, they are the way to clasp to hold, to secure the beads onto the wire and the way to secure the um, clasp to the wire. However, you need one item in crimps, one item. Oops, sorry. It's a two by two millimeter crimp. I buy mine from Softflex because they're double walled which makes them stronger than, can you see those in my hand? Yeah, we could also see them if you just wanna put them on the napkin, we could probably see it too there. Okay, so that is the only, the only crimp that I buy, period. Because crimps need to be covered and that's what finishes a piece and makes it from amateur to professional is how you finish it at the ends. So I stock in my where in, in my little inventory gold, which is I stock gold vermeil and gold filled because they have different shine. Hmm. I stock I sterling silver and I stock copper. <clears throat> now I found in a little teeny tiny bead store in Sebastopol, California. I found anthracite covers. So it's a, like an anodized silver. And uh, I, I'm sorry that I didn't have them now, but when I made an anodized piece, boy, did it really finish them. So crimp covers are far more important to have in color right. than crimps, okay? I use a sterling crimp because it has the softness and the durability because it's double walled. Okay, let's get started. And I just lost my piece of wire, so I'm gonna cut another one. Okay. And when you're going through this, you're gonna start, you're gonna be explaining how to pick the, the, the wire diameter, right, Lynn, you said? Correct. Correct. Awesome. So what I pulled out here is different wires. Oh, I don't think you're gonna see the white. 
I don't, yeah, you can't see the white. So let me take the napkin away. Can you, pers can you, first of all, can you see these? You can see uh -huh. it. Can you see those? The two yep. ones? Yes? Yes. Can you see that they are different in their thickness? The white one is very thin. The copper is not. Yeah. Okay. I hope you can see that. All right. So I'm going to start with the most basic, which is soft touch fine or soft flex fine. When I'm doing something ethnic and the beads are heavier or I'm making a piece that is longer, I use soft flex. It's a stronger okay. wire. In my normal, mostly everyday, I use soft touch. It's a little bit more flexible, not quite as rigid. And then huh, traditional pearls. You see here, very fine. In crimping, you don't just put the wire through the bead once. You put it through the bead twice. Traditionally cut fine gems and traditionally cut pearls. The holes are so tiny yeah. that I have to use the very fine. And again, Sam can get these in 30 foot rolls if you wanna try it. And they're not expensive. Um, I also carry my very fine in white because I do a lot of bridal jewelry and I, order, and I also have it in the basic silver. Okay. Right. There are times when especially ethnic beads like from Afghanistan or uh, you know Arabic countries where they have these fabulous brass and uh, sterling and cloisonne beads, <clears throat> sometimes <laughs> just dropped it again. Sometimes they're so heavy. And you, use, and you use the heavy wire for that, right? This is called heavy. And it's called heavy. And it is monster wire. You said, it says there's 49 strands of steel in that cable? Yeah, in between them. So here you can, you can definitely see the difference between the thicknesses of those strands. Yeah. In the 49 strand, what I like, excuse me, <clears throat> is that it's seven tiny strands wrapped into seven coils. So that's where we get the 49 strands from. Nice. It's very, very, very strong. Okay. The other important tool to have as a beater on wire or on anything is a bead reamer. I have made pieces and bought beads where the inside of the bead has a little nick or a little something on it. And after it's strung for a while, it wears away on that wire and the piece can break. So be, be careful on the insides of your beads. If you find that something is, is tearing your wire, a reamer is nothing more than a stick, but it's like an emery board. So you put it inside your bead and just turn it and it like sands down any imperfections on the center of that bead. So please don't feel that your wire is failing you. It's not. Okay. And no, I don't get a commission from SoftFlex. <laughs> you should. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions. Yep. Uh, Kathy is asking about stringing pearls. Yes. Um, so Kathy, Lynn had said she uses the very fine soft it, touch. It depends, it depends on the size of the holes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then Lori's asking about the diameter of heavy. Well, heavy is the name of the diameter. It has an, an exact measurement, but if you just buy the soft flex heavy, you'll be getting the mm -hmm. better way to find it, I think, on the site, Lori. Yeah. Or and requesting me to get it for you. 
Yeah, and you know what, Sam? It, we might do something like uh, buy a thousand foot spool and send out, you know, a, a 18 inch or a 20 inch length mm -hmm. to get people to, to use. And, and I, that's up to you. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. No, no it's so good. I, I love all the ideas you throw at me. Okay. Okay. Let's go to work. Awesome. Okay. So. Okay, this is a crimping tool. When you close it, you can see that there are two holes to the end of the nose. This is the nose. Okay, when you see one and you see it closed, this, this is closer to me, you can see that it forms like a V. Can you see that? Is that visible in the picture, Sam and Shira? Yeah, I can see that. Okay. And then the hole closer to the end or closer to the nose is rounder. So we use the crimp tool in two stages. This is to secure the crimp and this is to finish the crimp and make it round. All right, let's get busy. Nice. All right, uh, silver wire, I'm using soft flex fine. Um, simple. And I'm going to do this first as a practice shot. Okay. And everybody can do this. If you've bought the wire, it, it doesn't matter whose wire you have to learn how to crimp. If you have Anilon or Betalon or any of those guys, use it for learning because the techniques will be the same. Okay. Here is my piece. It's all beaded. It's all pretty. It's blah, blah, blah. I'm finished. And what I'm going to do is put, can you see the crimp in my fingers? Yeah. I'm going to put the, the wire through the crimp. And then I'm going to pretend to attach it to a clasp. Okay. Are we imagining there's a clasp right here? I'm going to actually show you a real clasp. It's a lot of shadow. Okay. Is that better? It was good. I was getting too much shadow. What do you say, Shara? I said it was good before. Better okay. before? No, it's about the same. You're good. Okay. So here's our clasp where my thumb is. And then we're going to go back through the clasp, through, through the crimp. Now, when you go back through, and I will show you this, you're not just, you're going to try and go back through the end beads. So when you're choosing your wire, it's not one thickness of the wire that has to go through the beads, it's two. And this is where your strength in finishing comes from, is right here. Okay, so let's assume we have our clasp right here. We're gonna get that crimp up nice and close to it. And now you'll notice that we have two sides of the wire. Separate them so that they are spread eagle and that clearly you have wire on both sides of that crimp. Then we're going to take the second, the second hole that looks like a W and we're gonna center the crimp in the middle of that hole. Can you see that? Yes. Squeeze. <laughs> okay. And what you see when you have squeezed that is you can see an indentation in the crimp and that the wires are on either side of that indentation. Can you see that? Totally. Okay, good. Okay, so now we have this crimp and it's pretty secure and nothing is gonna fall off either way. And this straggler piece has now gone through 
all these beads here. I'm gonna actually show you on a couple of necklaces. So you don't have to imagine it. The purpose of this exercise is just to try crimping. Okay, so the My next thing we're gonna, yes, Scott, I'm sorry. Um, Kathy is asking, do you knot the extra fine wire for pearls? No, however, um, I am not a knotter and I am not a crocheter. And the extra fine wire is specifically for crocheting. Um, uh, so I don't, I don't have that talent, but in fact, I put it out on Sam's site yesterday. I don't know how to knot and I never learned. And I would love to learn in one of our Saturday classes from somebody who does knotting. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I'd love to learn that. And because uh, I, like you, Shira, pearls are my jam. Yes. <laughs> and especially in bridal. Yes, absolutely. I'll have to pull out my knotter and practice a little. <laughs> All right, so now you see the second pair of glasses coming down over my eyes. <laughs> My favorite thing. <laughs> now we're going to use the hole that is closer to the nose of the plier. So you're going to have to catch, catch the sides of the crimp. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Catch the sides of the crimp and bend them together so that they form this round closure that is extremely ugly. However, nothing's going anywhere. Your gems aren't going anywhere. Your beads aren't going anywhere. You've got a very, very secure clasp here, okay? So let's do a crimp on here. Lynn, I do have to say that this is the prettiest crimping that I've ever done before though. So I think it's, I don't think, but I don't think it's, it's ugly. <laughs> uh, no, I understand that. I understand that. Okay, so crimp covers. I'm gonna put a gold one on here. And I learned to sit the crimp cover in the end of my crimping tool. That's how I learned, just to hold it that way. And then I found that with longer nails, it's harder. So, but this is how I was taught, was to just simply put it in there. And now I dropped it again, oh, here it is. <laughs> I find it easier to hold it in my fingers. Can you move a little up, Lynn? There you go. Sorry, thank you. Um, put it in my fingers, drop in the crimp, and then we're going to use the crimp tool again, the outer to close it up. And if you didn't get it perfectly closed, you use the crimp tool to gently close it. And there you have a covered crimp for a piece that you have designed with gold. Who need, does anybody need to see that again? Do you need to see, what do you need to see again? Because we're going to actually go now to a real piece. Lynn, and notes. I did it. What, Sam? <laughs> Wait, let me cancel the spotlight so you can see it. There we go. There's a jump ring in there, but I did it. Oh, and there we go. Now I can see it. Okay. <laughs> you put a jump ring on as your clasp. Good. Yeah. Um, okay. And we're going to quite... talk about we're going to talk about how close you need to be to your bead or to your clasp. So right. we'll do that next. Okay. Shira, what questions are coming up? Uh, question, do you use wire guards or do you use French wire? Uh, what? I know she said, um, oh, those wire are separate guard. questions. Yeah, two separate questions. So Lori's asking, do you use wire guards? And then I'm asking, uh, what about French wire because a lot of people say, oh, you have to have it to finish off and to make that curve around the wire. Oh, that's the little thing that goes, yeah, I don't. I should, I could, I haven't. <laughs> I forgot that wire guards existed. I used to use those all the time. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, I don't. Okay, Sam, I'm sorry. I did buy the, the holder from you. But Where is it? <laughs> I, you know what? I use roach clips. What can I tell you? Oh! <laughs> Alligator clips. Alligator clips. Sorry, I live, in, I live in Sonoma County in California. You know. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Okay, so here we are. And this is a piece I designed the, the week before Sam introduced these gorgeous Greek ceramic beads. And I absolutely fell in love with them. And my favorite metal to work with is copper. And I'm sorry that my phone keeps jiggling here. Uh, my apologies. Okay, so I'm gonna pull in the copper crimp covers if I can find them. Mm. First, I'm gonna take it apart. Now, the one thing I never, ever, ever do is cut my wires, never. So, and, and I'll talk about that because the other two pieces I'm gonna show you are still attached to the spools. All right, can you see it okay, Shira? You can see it well. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can see that. We can see the, the necklace, Lynn. Okay. So what I'm gonna do on this necklace is I'm gonna do a chain to make it adjustable. Oops. There we go. Copper crimp covers. Regular silver crimps. Okay. So, I'm. Huh. While we're in the interim, I realized I can announce the giveaway winner from last week. Um, Angela Cassio won the sea glass set that we were giving away. And then, so congratulations, Angela. And then, the next giveaway, we're, I'm giving away a roll of Softflex Fine 30 foot roll to someone attending the stream today. You just have to leave us a comment so we know you're here, say hello, um, and then you'll be entered to win. We'll announce it next week. Um, also, if you're just here, say hello because we like chatting with you, ask your questions as you go. Um, Lynn's gonna be showing us a few different pieces and but we've got time you can ask questions. This is what this is for. We want everyone to walk away feeling confident about stringing. Well, I had some little, I'm sorry, I'm not at my um, beating station. I'm in my library, so, okay. We'll just do it without. Okay, so I have chosen copper hooks. It's a hook and a jump ring. That's how they come. You can certainly use the jump ring but I am making my piece adjustable because, um, you know, if I want to wear a piece in the summertime, I want it to be 17 inches or 18 inches. And if I'm going to wear it over a turtleneck, I need another two inches. So that's why I make most of my pieces with um, chain and usually three inches of chain. Here is some copper chain. I'm going to use about three inches of it. And I like to put a little finishing bead here at the end. I think especially when you have a large hold bead, which this is, I use this as a plug because if I don't, the, the crimp will go inside the bead. <laughs> so you don't want that. <laughs> All right. And you see that I have about five inches of wire on this end and that's plenty. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do and yes, these are the 4,000 crimps that fell all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's one way to start a day. God, that was awful. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going through the crimp. 
okay? Everybody sees it. Then I'm gonna put on my hook. Everybody sees that? Yep, you're good. Go back through the crimp. Do you see that? Yep, and you're nice and clear. Thank you, we're back through the crimp. Okay, so now I'd like to go through about two inches back with my wire. So what I'm gonna do now, and we haven't discussed this yet, is you pull your crimp and you leave about, I would say a 16th of an inch. Otherwise it won't move. So can you see that the crimp is about a 16th of an inch away from the end of the, oh, I'm sorry. Away is it, from is it almost about the length of the, of the two millimeter crimp? Is there about two millimeters between yeah, the crimp that, and the that's about right. Yeah, okay. that's about right. Okay, then you separate them. And you gotta figure out how to do this comfortably for you. This is how I do mine. And that's comfortable for me. So go to the top of your crimp here to the V and squeeze. And now we have our indentation in the top of the bead, which I think, yeah, I can see it. So I know you can. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> then I tug on the long end just to make sure I've gotten it nice and tight. Okay, and then take that crimp, get on both sides of it, squeeze it round. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. looks great, Lynn. Okay, wonderful. Then the next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna put a copper crimp on this, crimp cover on this. These happen to be from Softflex. Um, and I like their crimp covers. I buy every anybody's. Pretty much. We have a question about crimp covers, Lynn. I'm going to yes. ask while you do this. Yes. Um, Carrie's asking, what do you do when your crimp cover doesn't close all the way? So that's an indication of two things. Um, either you haven't crimped, you haven't rounded your crimp adequately, or the crimp cover may be too small. I use two millimeter crimps, three millimeter covers. Okay. So that, yeah, that's, and, that's what, and that's what you had me stock in the shop. So we have right. two millimeter crimps, three millimeter cover, covers. Yeah. I just tried it, it worked well, but I had to go around and change the angle to get it to fully close. So, and, and one of the things that you can do also when you're still in the raw crimp stage is just go around and around it here. So just keep well, turning Lou, it. We can't quite see what you're doing. I'm so, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Turn this, turn this around and then around here and crimp it a little rounder and then a little more and crimp it a little rounder. So until you can get that crimp really nice and round and small. Does that answer her question? I think that should. Okay, a response, no response? Okay, so now I have a crimp cover and sometimes crimp covers whoop, come like this. They look completely closed, they're not. <clears throat> I didn't bring the tool in, but the round nosed pliers, just totally round nosed pliers, stick this on the end of it and smush it down on the thing and this will open up. Cool. Which will give you this. Okay, so here's an open one. Can you see it? Yep. Okay, dropping my crimp in to the crimp cover I need three hands for this, as we all do. Take the crimp cover and gently close it. And then if you need to, if the crimp cover is not closed, sometimes you may just have to go around and close it. Lori's asking, why do you choose not to use a jump ring? And then Julie's curious if you're using 
um, plated or pure copper? I think I think for the chain. Pure copper. And yes, it does tarnish. But so does plated. All right. Um, I don't use jump rings because I don't need to. You know, this got one right there. And I, I personally don't think it adds anything to the design. If it adds to how easily the piece is clasped, go for it. Okay, so now we're, we're left with these two strands. And what you wanna do here is go right back through these beads. Come on, go through. That's your end, that's the end of your piece right there. And just keep going back through. This is where the, the um, width of your wire is important if you're working with pearls. Because going back through on pearls can make you cry. It can make you cry. Yeah, it can make you cry. That is true. Okay, so we have now gone back with the tail of that wire through this, through three inches or four inches of beads. Okay. And you see that when you put a nice bead on next to it as your plug there, that um, your crimp cover just looks like part of the necklace. It doesn't look like finishing. Okay. <clears throat> The other end is different. And the other end is the second end of your piece. And I'm very upset because I had a little copper beads. Where did I put them? Oh, well, okay. We'll just do it without. Lynn, do you double crimp ever? We have a question. Never. I, I thought you might say that. <laughs> why, would, why would you? I mean, I, I, I haven't, I never have. It doesn't mean one shouldn't. It just means I've never seen the need to do it. Great. So, yeah. Has everybody been able to see very clearly these steps? Uh, yeah. We'll let people, yeah, put us in the comments if you didn't see anything clear enough, but I actually, it's been looking pretty good. Okay. On my end, Lynn. Sorry, say again. How's it looking for you, Shira? Looking great. I'm just enamored with all the copper color. It's so beautiful. Okay, so this crimp that wasn't open, I'm gonna use as a copper bead because <laughs> I just can't find anything else. Okay, so I'm putting my copper bead there as the plug. Normally that would be a round bead. <laughs> okay, now we're going to the chain and this is end number two of your piece. This is crimped differently than the first end. Okay, so we take our chain, put the wire through it. And now you put the wire back through. Now, bef oh, sorry, I don't have a crimp on there, do I? Oops, sorry. Last bead. <laughs> Crimp. Through the chain. Back through the crimp. Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay, got lots of uh, uh, spare wire here. Okay, <clears throat> now Now we go back through and we are, we have not, we have not crimped the crimp yet. Okay. So you're going to go back through with that extra tail and the same, you know, three, four inches, doesn't matter. We're going back through. We're giving this piece a lot of extra strength. I, I tend to waste a lot of wire, but I like my pieces to be really strong. 
Okay, I think I went through three of the barrels on the other side, so I'm going to do the same thing here. So here we go, we're back through three barrels. Okay, so now I'm going to pull it tighter. Just keep pulling it nice and tight. <laughs> My crimp did fall inside that bead. <laughs> Come on, baby, come out of there. Oh, it wants to be in there. Damn. Sorry, I'm gonna have to use another one. That first one just filled the hole, so okay. This one's not gonna slip through. <laughs> So you're on your chain, back through the crimp, and back through a couple inches. <laughs> There's our original crimp right there. <laughs> yeah. So you, even your even your spacer bead had a, a hole too big. For the too big, yeah. It's too big. <laughs> well, we tried. <laughs> we did. We tried. All right. So. Here we are on end number two. And we've got about, you wanna make sure that your piece is still movable, that you have not made your, God damn it. Oh, sorry. Crimp went through again. Okay, we're gonna put this piece aside and I'm gonna show you on a better piece where I'm better prepared and I apologize. All good. I, we still actually, we still got the steps again from the first side, so it's all Yeah, good. but this is different. Okay, so let's play with this one. This gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Jasper. Wow. Isn't that stuff cool? It's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. So I'm putting all the copper components away. I'm bringing in Vermeer. Lynn, I appreciate that you're not scared of my big beads. <laughs> you never have feel... been. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> there, there is a copper necklace that I made for myself. The beads are two inches in diameter. <laughs> it is spectacular. And I am a large person, so it, it's not hard. <laughs> okay. Is it heavy? Not too heavy, no. But the, the color in them was gorgeous. Anyway, so what you can see here is that I have, I don't typically cut my pieces. I don't cut the wire before, uh, I keep them on the spool and I don't cut them before crimping. The reason is I don't waste as much wire. If I cut off five inches on this end and five inches on this end, I, I would be wasting so much wire. So. I tend to keep my pieces attached to the wire spool. So here we go on side number one. Oh, there's already a crimp on it, but I want a bead. Okay. Michelle, I can't remember what exactly the size of those, that tiger iron or zebra iron was. It was around that though, it was around 15 or 16. Yeah. And really nice. Too big? No, that's a good scale. Okay. Shara, what are you going to do with the rest of your vacation coming up? Oh, are you kidding? Did you see what she displayed yesterday? When she got what? her stash? You know what she's doing. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. So I tried all kinds of different things in the design of this piece. And honestly, the potato chips were just the easiest. Uh, they looked the best with this and they didn't fight with it. So I'm putting a rather big bead. Oh no, hole's too big, sorry. I'm gonna get into that same problem where the crimp's gonna go through the bead again. So I'm gonna choose a smaller bead. Sorry. Oh. Da, 
just your basic box of different Vermeil rounds, different sizes of Vermeil rounds. Wow. But, uh, no, I think they're critical to, you know, these, these are what you put next to your crimp so that your piece really looks finished. Oh, I'm gonna go a little different. Okay. Yeah, I okay. think one of gold for maybe like that. <laughs> What'd you say, Tyra? I said, I think I just have one size of those small little gold beads. I start at one millimeter and go up to about eight and they're in half millimeter increments. So wow. just do something that's a little different shape. Okay, so here we go. Side number one, put on your end bead and you can see the holes nice and small. My crimp's not gonna flow through that. Okay, then the crimp. Put your crimp through. Put your, put your wire through the hook. Take your wire back through the crimp. Give yourself a couple of inches. Then go pull that crimp two millimeters from the clasp, spread eagle it. Make your W. Make your W. Take your W or V, it doesn't matter. Put it into the first hole, round it. You are crimped. Tug on the big long end to make sure that that crimp has held. And it did. Okay, let's get a couple of covers on here. <clears throat> Okay, let's take our crimp cover, drop the crimp into it, close it with the crimp cover, then go around it because some of the sides are not perfectly even of the crimp cover. And there you go. Okay, we've got about two and a half inches here. We're gonna go back through the beads for strength. And the wire I used on this, because the beads are heavier, is the soft flex. It's strong, it's not, it's not stronger, it's heftier. Okay, just gonna go back through. So has anybody volunteered to teach a knotting class yet? <laughs> the comments? Not that I have seen yet. Okay. Not seen yet. <laughs> All right, so we are now back through and there's one finished Okay, so now, and this is why, this is why I never take the beat, the necklace off the roll because all I need is a couple of inches. So I'm gonna cut those couple of inches. Okay. Gonna put our plug bead on there. Then our crimp. And now we've got our chain. Back through the crimp. Oh, wait a minute, this is side. No, this is side two, okay. We're going back through the crimp. 
back through the beads, all the way back through. This time you need to see the end of the wire. Get it nice and tight. Okay, We can actually go through another bead here. We have enough wire. And there it is. There's our wire. Okay, now we pull. <clears throat> and you'll see, first, you wanna go, uh, Sam, there you go. Sam, get the gallery view. You wanna go like this to make sure that your uh, necklace is not, can still bend. You're not too tight on your wire. Okay. Then you want to pull the wire so that you're nice and tight and then take your nail and give yourself two millimeters away from your chain. Got it? Okay, this is different. So what you want to see is the flat loop of the wire against your hand. Does everybody see the flat loop? I can't no. quite see that. No? There Don't we go. The loop here. Do you see yeah, the loop of the wire, there. the wire into the chain? No? Yes, we can see it. It's, it's okay. So then this is harder. You have to make sure in your placement of your crimper that you're on that your crimper is going to get both sides of that wire in the w oh and your only indication this time is seeing the flat loop that's exactly right which is pretty hard to see there it is oh, there you go there you, you nailed go. you nailed that focus lynn yeah okay so there's the flat loop and your crimper was on either side of it to get your W. Then turn it, put it in the first hole, sorry, put it in the first hole of your crimper and round it. Come on, baby. There we go. And this takes some practice. There you can see it. Close it. And sometimes it's not as round as you want it. Okay, there we go. Next piece, crimp cover. There it is. Oops. How are we doing on time? Um, we're nearing, we're nearing the end. So I'm wondering if um, we want to open up the remainder of the time for some questions. Um, is there anything in the last piece you wanted to show that was different or you just yeah. want to mention about the last piece after yeah. this? So then you still have your wire here from your second end and you want to end it as close to a big bead as possible. Get in there and trim off the tail. And that's, that was your tail going back through the beads and we just cut that off. Okay. So now you see the piece finished, mostly finished. Stunning. I would then cut this to about three or four inches. And I have a smaller bead of the iron jasper. So I would just put that on a um, head pin with two little gold potato chips on either side of it and finish my piece with that little decoration. Some, you shouldn't leave the end of the chain raw. 
That's the difference between this piece selling for $60 or $75. And I would charge that for this piece, even though the beads were cheap. Well, you put it with gorgeous, you put it with gorgeous metal, so it's stunning. You know, and it's, this is gonna sound terrible, but there's a snobbery to my design. And I, I just, my dad always told me it takes as much time to sell a $2 million house as a $200,000 house. So why not? When you have beads that are gorgeous and metals that are gorgeous and clients that are willing to pay for it, um, I don't compromise I, and I don't want to, I just don't want to. So I know that sounds terribly snobby um, and I don't mean it to, but I don't want to sell it for twenty dollars. Well, you've very clearly defined the audience you're trying to appeal yes. to in creating your pieces. I think that's important. Yes. And, and regardless of which audience it is, you've chosen and you're designing for them. That's right. That's and that's true. That's true. And I have a yeah decent sized clientele, so it's okay. So I'm going to just cut this. I'm not going to add the end piece right now because we're out of time. We've had a couple of questions asking where you get your solid copper chain from. You don't have to share it, so it's totally up to you, but. Um, so when I go to the shows, I have several vendors from whom I buy solid copper chain. And what's important about the chain is um, not every copper chain has, oh, here it is, sorry solid links some of them have the links are open and they can be pulled apart you don't want that you so you prefer using the soldered links oh absolutely no question okay. no question there's no reason to use anything else okay <clears throat> um so multi-creation in new jersey um you know at different shows i see different vendors with different links. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there was a gem show in, in uh, Santa Rosa before, the, before we couldn't do shows. And I found a new wire vendor. He had vermeil, he had gold filled, he had sterling, he had silver plate. So I was really happy to find um, a real gamut of different chains and this, the gauge of the chain has to be the gauge of the piece. You know, if I'm using gauge some, the chain, come, what was that? The gauge of the beads, the, 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 um, the weight of the beads, the scale of the beads. Yeah. The wire has to be strong enough to hold, you know, heavy enough chain the chain has to be heavy enough to support the weight of these beads. So it's gotta be a heavy enough scale in the chain. Gotcha. Yeah. Rachel okay. is asking, uh, yeah, Rachel, I will be, there are sterling crimp covers now in the shop. Um, Rachel's asking if you recommend buying chain from shows instead of online, Lynn. No, I, I, I don't buy online unless it's a reorder. Um, I, I just, I need to see it and touch it and feel it. So I can give you an example. In the gold chain box. Heavier chain for bigger pieces, sorry. Um, and I, I buy them from everybody, Rach. So um, I, I buy it when I see it. I buy it when I think it's the right price. And then for a really lightweight piece, like lightweight pearls or lightweight fine gems, I would use something small like this. I'm not sure if you can see the scale but scale in jewelry design is so important that the, the clasp needs to be the right size for the scale of the piece. The finishing needs to be 
the right scale for the size of the piece. So choices of wire are part of that scale. Right. I'm curious, Shara, Shara, as someone who's also strung for many years, like, do you have any differences in your process? No, it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. I do wonder, Lynn, if you could address maybe um, for multi-strand necklaces <laughs> in particular, uh, how many <laughs> strands per clasp using the way that you, you that you showed us? I don't clasp this way when I do multi-strands. Um, I clasp on either a jump ring or a figure eight that I put into a cone. Because all, and you don't use crimp covers. Mm -hmm. You just crimp them. Because that ugliness goes on the inside of the cone. Uh, Sam, you want to pull up a piece that I've put on the site of one of a multi-strands? That's the you Sure, give me, give me a second. I hope I wasn't prepared. I know. <laughs> Let's see what I could do. Okay. I'm not uh, I love, what was that? It was a... Uh, like the blue, oh, the, the blue. blues with the blue yeah. and gold. That oh, your grandmother wanted that one. She she still talks about that yeah. piece. <laughs> that was the first day that you introduced the Czech melons. That was that you were the first one to get that, the, the well, melon drops. You sent me those the week before to make something out of. So that's where they were. Yeah. Oh. Wow, we we've. There's been so many New Beat Sundays <laughs> in the last, <laughs> in, since June. Where are these? Oh my goodness. Lynn, I may have thrown you under the bus just a little bit. Helen's, no, no. Asking, Helen's asking, will you be doing a multi-strand necklace live? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. It's my business. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want to come on here to, to, to do the basics. So now that I have retired that. and I'm fully doing bridal, um, <laughs> I, I'll be happy to show the technique. Yes, I will. Y'all got to promise not to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. There's so much amazing. If I haven't done this in a while, but if you're, I'm scrolling down the photos feed. If you yeah. click on photo, the media tab of the group, my gosh, there are so many amazing pieces that people have shared here. Um, but it, will Maybe I find privately, them? Helen? <laughs> yeah, I'll just find. I'll post that after the class because I love that piece. I just, um, you know, when when um, you start as a hobbyist, um, I. I remember, you know, when I was 15, I used to make tons and tons and tons of earrings, just tons. And then I didn't do it for a while. Then I had daughters and we were on a trip and I bought some stretchy cord and some Swarovski crystals and made them some bracelets. You know, I mean, you know, my, they were probably four and eight and now they're 32 and 29. <laughs> so, um, the stretchy cord is how I first learned to, the first way I ever made a bracelet. Um, in terms of selling and in terms of up, elevating the design, a nothing does more to elevate a design than a clasp, a real clasp. Um, and I'm gonna contradict myself here because I don't make a lot of bracelets because they're never the right size. <laughs> You know, so I make bracelets when I can have them almost finished and I can pry them on the victim, <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, why, why not use the same uh, chain technique as with, the, with your necklaces? Because then you got chain. In but you could add sparkles to the chain. No, but it's in your way. It's the same reason I don't make glass bracelets. So you don't hit it, hit it on anything? Exactly. You knock them around, you break them, and, you know. So I don't, I don't make glass bracelets. I typically make either very dense gems or metals. Got it. I try not to make bracelets at all because, <laughs> you know, just not my thing. That's Okay. That's Other Rachel, questions? Yeah, Rachel's asking, how do you go about finding the right clientele? 
how do you market to the right clientele? Okay, um, that's a really, really, really good question. Um, so uh, next month, I will be 70 and I am launching uh, my new career, which will be exclusively beating. Um, and uh, the first thing I'm doing is a Facebook page. The second thing I will do is an Etsy shop, very, very, very small. And it will feed to my website. So the way I have marketed in person, Rachel, is we've, I have four partners. One of them does uh, fused glass. One of them is a, a watercolor artist. And one of them designs and imports Pashmina is from Nepal and she's from Nepal. So the four of us rented empty stores in Berkeley. And this is how, can I, can I tell the story, Lynn? Yeah, please do, go ahead. So I- we met. <laughs> this is how Lynn and I met. She did, a, she did, she rented a space maybe five blocks from, my, from, where, from where I lived. And I walked in, was admiring all the jewelry, started chit-chatting, told her about the group. She joined, she just thought I was like some cute little kid. She's like, I'll join it, sure, why not? And then she's been in the group ever since. And now, um, Yeah, but you know, we moved, we moved uh, from Oakland to wine country four and a half years ago. And I've only very recently started picking up my beads again. And um, I get really inspired every week by one bead I buy from Sam and then I'll make six pieces just because one bead gets me out of a little design rut. You know, we all get designer's block. It happens. So, um, yeah. So yeah, Sam walked into 14 years old. Oh my God. 14 years old, this little pipsqueak walks in. <laughs> and you know, now you're now you're a man and you're at Juilliard and you're, you know, you've got this business that is really significant. And more importantly, Sam, what you've done with it is you haven't created a business, you've created a community. And I rely on that community and the warmth that um, I get and give to other beaters and encouragement that I get and encouragement that I give it's, it's a real gestalt of, um, this is more than beating. This is beating. That's what, yeah, that's what I've always wanted. And that's what yeah. always was so nice about the Facebook group is it didn't have to be a- Yeah, it's beating with my family. It's beating with my family. Oh, that makes me so happy, like Liz. <laughs> and now we have Shira moderating gem chat, keeping us chatting and gem chat. I love it so much that you've, Take it on that rule, Shira. But I have to break the rules, Shira. Every week, I'm sorry, I have to break the rules. Rules. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I suggested we should rename the game Toss, Keep, Share. There's no Sherry. <laughs> There's no Sherry. <laughs> the fourth one, Toss, Keep, Share, Pull Your Hair Out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I would love to pursue the summit. I think, no, I love the idea. I don't know how yeah. to organize it, but well, I think it's a great idea. I think idea. we should find a, a, a weekend, a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, you know, Shira, you teach on Saturdays. Uh, it's every other Saturday. Okay. So, you know, I think that um, it's just really a question of all of us being on Zoom together, creating together, and, and when somebody finishes a piece, hold it up and talk about it. And to me, it feels like um, to me it feels like success. That's what it feels like. You know, I see beginners um, trying all kinds of different combinations and new color combinations, new beads to play with, and I I am so tickled that older people older people, younger people, everybody wants to try this in a way that is um, non-threatening and very supportive. Totally. 
So yashikoach to you, buddy, which means, uh, you know, more power to you for doing this. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love the idea of the summit. I think we should do that in like January, maybe um, after the craziness of the holidays. Um, after the inauguration. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, you know, we can all breathe after that. Well, I'm sorry, I got political. I promised I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did promise. <laughs> you held on really well. <laughs> yeah, you made it an hour and 10 minutes, Lynn. <laughs> I'm sorry, it has been such an occupied part of my life. I know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, um, so Rachel, um, uh, Rachel's in New York? Rachel's in Brooklyn. Okay, so in uh, East Brunswick which is on Route 9 on the, I, th I can't remember if it's on, on the Parkway or the Golden State, the Turnpike or the, the Parkway. Multi Creations is a tremendous vendor to me. Um, I found them to be in, in probably 20 years I've been buying from them, um, head pins, eye pins, different materials, different gauges, uh, they have some beads, but eh, meh, uh, but wire, I mean, uh, not wire, um, chain, lots of chain. What you'll find now is every time you go to a bead show, you'll find these wonderful vendors, mostly Indian or Chinese. Uh, most of the chain comes from China. Sure. That's their sources. So these guys have, uh, and it seems to be that they really, uh, these vendors come up with the best pricing. And, you know, if you want a 26 gauge, two inch sterling eye pin, multi has it. They really, really focus on findings. Um, I have another little vendor called J and M in San Francisco. And um, they do a ton of findings also. And He'll go into the cheaper stuff. He, the, the guy at this, this, Ming. Uh, this yeah, Ming will go into the cheaper stuff. So he'll go into silver plate or he'll go into right. uh, brass plated, you know, something like that. Now, um, Sam and I have discussed Sam beginning to sell clasps. And um, um, they're big. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a field trip for Sam and Shira. <laughs> but Let's go. yeah, it's a field trip. So um, I have been buying my clasps mostly from anywhere I see. I buy them directly from Israel, um, from the people who make my logos, my little logo charms. I love, your, I love you finish every piece with one of your well, logo charms. I didn't today, but that was... I wasn't the point of signing your pieces. It was the point of getting the, cri the crimping done properly. Um, so I get a tremendous amount that I buy directly from them. I also have a source in Greece. I have a source in South Africa. Um, the African beads are incredible. Oh my God. Um, Sam will be putting some of the African beads up on his site um, if we can ever get our shit together. I know you, you, we're, we're gonna, you're gonna send those to me ages ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I never have. <laughs> oh, good. We, anyway, we have time. Yeah. There's a request to see your logo charms, Lynn. Okay, can you give me a minute? I'll give you a minute. You're good. Okay. Shara and I will put on our show. Okay, I wanna hear you sing, Sam. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm resting. A little aria, Sam. Although, Sam, I do admit, you can find anything on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Those videos are old and I have, uh, you have, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hold on, getting berate of messages, okay. So what are you gonna do your vacation week, Shara? I am in the process of reorganizing beads. <laughs> I, I switch from small containers to big tubs, and now I think I want to go back to small containers. So, how do you? I could never change. I just so you, but you had your stuff organized by color, if I remember what you said in the gem yeah. chat. 
Yeah. So right now I just have like a huge 40 quart tub of blues and greens. And it needs 40 quarts. <laughs> there's a process inside the, the tub, but okay. I <laughs> back <laughs> into smaller things. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, Helen, yes, you can rewatch this later. Um, wow, wait, there's a ton of people commenting. Let me catch up. Um, oh, the tree. Angela, I'm so glad you asked. Here's my Christmas tree. I so far have a pineapple from Brenda, and I have my beaded ornament there too, but it's hiding. Um, anyone wants to send me an ornament to add to the tree, I will gladly accept. Nudge, nudge, Shara. <laughs> no pressure, I'm kidding. Your place on, uh, what is it, it's on Piedmont. Yeah. <sighs> I don't think I'm too far from you. I can't, I don't know exactly how far I am, but. Was that Blue Door? Well, no, because I'm now on people, either I'm near Blue Door. Um, uh -huh. I was asking about my new office location. Okay. So that's my logo and my business card. And my logo charms. Michelle uh -huh. sent me one, that's so sweet. What? Um, Michelle says she sent an uh, ornament for my tree. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I, yes, Anna, I will. The crimp tool is now on the site. You can order that. And. Vermeer. Oh my God, let me pin that. Uh, yes, Pamela, the address to send an ornament, if you're going to very kindly send one, is the one on the on your packages. Copper. Do you want to explain your logo, Lynn? I could. Anodized silver. Wow. And, and white silver. So, and these go at the end of a piece. You can see there's a hole in them. So they get strung at the very end, right next to the crimp. I think it's such a lovely touch that you put those on your pieces. Honestly, it's again, the difference between a less expensive piece and a more expensive piece. And I didn't do anything to make it more. Just, just to sign, you can say it's a signed piece. Rachel's so, asking how you attach it. Yeah, it's, it's, um, Do you just, uh, I'm trying to get, I can't even, oh, you do string it on with the beads? strung on at the end, I put two little tiny round copper beads next to it to, to secure the look. And then the crimp would be here. Lovely. And that's the end of a piece. Uh, Maria, the, the, the beads that Lynn is using here, those are the zebra um, jasper that you can find in the shop. You could just, if you go to samsbeachup.com, you can search zebra and find those. Um, we have those in a few different shapes. Um, I think we can actually go ahead and wrap it up. Um, okay. I feel like you've shared so much amazing information with us today, Lynn, so I so appreciate it. Okay. Um, Rachel, would you, would you like me to explain my logo? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. So my children came up with the name of the company, House of Belmont. My name is Lynn Belmont. <laughs> um, I am an Israeli citizen, so uh, a lot of what I do is from Israel or in Hebrew or whatever. Um, so this here with the line across the bottom, this squiggle with the line across the bottom is the letter B in Hebrew, the letter bet. Mm -hmm. And I put a 
straight line down, which created sort of an H for house and sort of a B for Belmont. <laughs> and it's a chair. Come on in and get comfortable. So I love it. that's the logo. Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. It's so, it's gorgeous. It was the day I learned Illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you and you know and it's um i love it i just i just love it it means a lot to me yeah thanks for sharing Shara, are you what are you feeding this week do you have any projects that you're finishing up i don't have any projects i'm i, I like starting a project and finishing it so i don't really have leftovers um but sure. i do bunch of new beads and who knows what's coming up sunday hmm. Shira, oh, I, have no. five, I have five or six boards going at a time <laughs> that's my add it's crazy <laughs> wow um okay and i announced the giveaway that we're giving away a roll of soft flex so just leave us a comment so we know that you're here and we can enter you into it um last, the last week's winner was angela cassio i think you saw i think you saw that you, you won but i see you're here now angela so now you definitely know you won and let's end it here. That was, thanks so much for a great class, Lynn. I so appreciate it. This was fun. See, it doesn't get easier the more you just try it. It gets easier. You know, I, Sam, I was never nervous. It's just, I wanted to make sure that everybody could see what my hands were doing and that the crimps were doing and what the tools were doing. So that was my biggest concern. Well, I appreciate how much you care. This is a great class. So thank and you I so much. I love Rachel's classes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, Rachel is here, and I'm very curious to see what our star Rachel Malice has has made along with this class. So, if, oh, Rachel's good about remembering this. If you make something, post it in the gem chat, which I'll post a link right now. If in case you're not in the gem chat, um, that's the perfect place to share what you're making. Doesn't ha have to include beads from Sam's Beat from my shop, but share anything you're making there. Shira is our lovely moderator and we'll approve your post and we'll all get to Oddle, Oogle, Oddle, Oogle. Oogle. You know the Oggle. Oggle, thank you. <laughs> Over all your designs. Alrighty, I'll end it there. Thank you to both of you for doing this with me. This is great. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Shira. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Alrighty. I'll see you both very soon. Bye.